Okay, let's take a quick look at the selection sort. Uh, and so what we'll do uh, is look at um, this representation where we have an array, uh, element 0 through 9, uh, and we have the values um, in, the, in the second row here. Um, and what we're going to do is try to slide the lowest element uh, to the left-hand side. So right now we'll just assume the first element is the lowest, and then we'll go through and do some comparisons. Uh, and we'll have a second one just to keep track of where we're at. And so first thing we'll do is just compare uh, element 0 and 1. So uh, the numbers values 41 uh, to, to 67. Uh, and is 67 lower than 41? No, so far that assumption of 41 being the lowest is okay. Uh, so we'll compare the next one and say, okay, well, is 34 less than 41? It is. So what we'll do is we'll move... Uh, or change our low value uh, to point to 34, our um, subscript 2 uh, in this array. And then we'll continue the comparisons. Uh, now we're comparing low to the next value. So is 0 less than 34? It actually is. So again, we'll move the low uh, indicator uh, to element 3 uh, in, the, in the array. Uh, and then we'll compare the rest. Uh, is 69 less than zero? Uh, no, and we can compare uh, just kind of looking ahead. Uh, we'll go through each other comparison, uh, and there will there'll be no more lower values than zero. Uh, so we'll take the low and our original indicator, uh, and we'll take those two values and actually swap them to get the lowest value uh, in the zeroth element of the array. Okay. Once we do that, we'll reset our indicator. So now uh, low is going to point to uh, 67. We're going to we're going to kind of ignore the lowest part of the array now because we know we have the lowest element here. So we're only going to look at element one uh, and beyond. Uh, and so we're going to have both of our indicators uh, starting on the element one uh, and pointing at 67. And so we'll go through and say same thing as before uh, is 34 less than 67. It is, so we'll, we'll re-indicate low. Uh, and then we'll go through, uh, as usual, 41 less than 34. No, uh, no for uh, the fourth element here. It's 24 less than 30, 34. Yes, it is. Uh, we'll reposition the low element uh, to keep track of it. And then we'll compare... Uh, the rest of the elements and we can just kind of assume uh, the computer algorithm would go through check those and uh, they're not lower than 24 uh, so we just check each one of those we end up with low uh, pointing at the fifth element and our other indicator pointing at one uh, so we'll swap those two values uh, 67 and 24 so we're now we've positioned element one uh, with the next lowest number, so 0, 24. So you can see as we continue this algorithm, uh, we're going to have those sorted. Um, and then the next step would be uh, reposition uh, low in our indicator uh, to element 2, because now we have the lowest element uh, in 0, and then the next lowest in 1, and then we'll go after the next step in the process, we would have the next lowest in 2 and continue down the line. Okay? So we kind of see how that works. Uh, let's go to code and see uh, what we can do here. And so I'll just start out uh, creating our array here. So we're going to put uh, 20 in. So I'm going to create an array size of 20 uh, to start out with. And so we'll int nums uh, as an array. And it will be of uh, size 20 or the array size. Okay. And so that uh, does that. We need to populate our array. So I'm going to create a for loop. Uh, and we'll go through uh, all the arrays of the element. So we'll, we'll just create a, a counter called k. Uh, started at 0. We're going to stop it when we get to uh, the array size. And, of course, we're going to get there uh, by 1. So we'll do k plus plus. Okay. And... We'll just randomly put numbers in here, or pseudo-randomly. Uh, I'm not going to seed the, the, the value so we end up with the same set of random numbers each time. Uh, that can actually help us look at uh, how the, how the uh, sort is working. 
Uh, so we'll say nums uh, sub k uh, is going to be initialized to uh, rand, and let's go between uh, uh, up to 100, so we'll say uh, mod uh, 100, and so we should get some pretty good random numbers there. Uh, so that'll populate our array, and then let's go ahead and print out so we see what our random numbers are going to be. We'll just display it, so 4, uh, and again we'll just take i from 0 uh, up to uh, the array size, so as long as i is less than array size, and i++, plus plus. Uh, so we'll go, we'll iterate through uh, by 1's. Uh, next thing we need to do is just print, so we'll see out uh, num sub i, and I'll go ahead and put a space at the end because we're just going to print them across uh, a row all together. And then at the end of uh, this, we'll go ahead and put an inline um, so we're ready uh, for the next time we print uh, the sorted numbers. Uh, they would be on the next line. Okay? So let's go ahead and execute this just to see what our numbers are. Uh, so I'll compile and run this. And we get a set of... Uh, fairly random numbers, although we'll see that uh, without the correct seed value we're going to get the same random numbers each time. We'll, so we'll continue here with our sort. Uh, so we'll go ahead and sort the array. So I need to go through the loop. Uh, remember my first set of pointers I'm going to say is uh, I um, and then we'll have an inner loop uh, to handle the last part where we're actually doing the switching. Okay, so remember we need to keep track of the lowest value, so I'm going to create an integer low. Uh, and then also at some point we need to switch uh, the values or swap the values, so I'm going to create a temp variable uh, that we'll use later on. And then I'll set up my loop, my outer loop, uh, I'm going to set as i, and I'm going to start it, of course, at 0. And since we don't need to check the last element, I'm going to go from i up to... Uh, instead of array size, I'm going to go array size minus 1, and we're going to increment uh, by 1 each time. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and initialize before we start our next loop. We're going to set the low value uh, equal to i, um, so that's going to be the first element we start with in the next loop that I'm just going to call the j loop. Um, so we'll start at i as the lowest, making that assumption, and then we'll check each value to prove whether that's right or wrong. Okay, so 4, and this one I'm going to set up as j to keep a separate loop here, so int j. And so I'm going to start j at uh, i plus 1, because we're going to compare i uh, to, and we, want, we don't want to compare i to i, so we're going to set j equal to i plus 1, the next element in the array. Uh, so we'll be comparing, the first comparison will be uh, side by side, and then we'll go from the i plus 1 uh, all the way to the end of array size. And so here, um, we have array size here and array size minus 1 here again, so we're not comparing the same uh, element uh, when, we, when we're looking at these two things. So uh, then we'll do uh, j plus plus, because we will uh, go from... Uh, I plus 1 all the way up to the end of the array. Okay, so we've got our loop set up the way we want uh, for the comparisons. Now we actually need to do the comparisons, so we'll do an if statement and we'll say if uh, num sub j is less than, and what we're going to do is look at uh, the lowest number, but remember uh, our low is keeping track of the index, not the value. So we're not going to say less than low, we're going to say less than nums sub low. That keeps our position of the lowest element. Okay, uh, So this will compare the values of num sub j to the value of num sub low. Um, if it's less, then we have an invalid assumption. Uh, the, the i uh, element is not uh, the lowest, so we need to re reset uh, that, and we're going to set low equal to, well, if num sub j was less than num sub low, we'll just set it, uh, the index equal to j, okay? 
and we're not going to move the value because we're just going to swap. We're going to use that index later on to swap uh, the proper values. And so we'll go through the whole uh, J loop. Uh, at the end of that loop, we will have identified the lowest element because we've made all our comparisons at that point. So at that point, we can swap uh, if we need to. So temp uh, is going to be equal to num sub low. And then we're going to set num sub low uh, equal to uh, num sub i. That next lowest element that we're looking at. And then, of course, uh, we'll set num sub i equal to uh, the temp value. So essentially, we're going to swap num sub i uh, and num sub low. Okay, so those two values. Uh, and then, of course, we would go back through the loop. Uh, we're going to go to I, we're going to reset low each time, uh, and then we'll go to the next I, so we're comparing again the next I, and then J starts at whatever I is plus one. Um, and that should pretty much do it. Um, the only thing we have left to do is do our output, so we'll go ahead and do an output. Uh, I'll go ahead and do the K loop, uh, start at zero, go all the way to the end of the race size, and get there by one. Uh, and then we'll just see out uh, num sub k and put a space again so we can space it out. Uh, and then um, I'll go ahead and put another inline here just to make it look like the first one. And let's execute that and see what we get. Okay, so this is our selection sort. So you see our original values that printed out. Uh, and then our same values uh, where we went through and uh, sorted them. And so we've only got those, those uh, two things. Uh, so let me do one more thing just so we can kind of see how this sort is working uh, a little bit better. I mean, it works. It sorted the, the, uh, the numbers. But we want to see what's going on inside. So I'm going to repeat this output, but I'm going to do it just at the bottom of the I loop. Uh, so I'm going to do another 4K uh, and exactly this same thing. In other words, I want to output the whole array at that point to see uh, what each step uh, looked like. Okay, And so I'm just going to repeat the output every time we pick a new low value and do the swap. I want to see what we've done. So let's see how that works. And so now we see each step uh, of, of the process. So our original uh, random numbers here. And then notice in the selection sort, uh, after the first iteration, we took that zero value, which is the lowest number. Uh, and it ends up in the zeroth element of our array. Uh, and then the next time, the lowest number would be five. So on the next iteration, five gets shoved down here. And then we're just making comparisons of what's left. Uh, so theoretically, we have a little bit better uh, sort algorithm here than, than maybe some of the ones we looked at in the past. Uh, and so you can see each time through, uh, we're, we're adding another uh, lowest number that we're, we're piling down there. Okay, so um, we can see uh, kind of what the array looked like uh, after each iteration uh, of our loops for the selection sort. So just one more little trick here that I want to look at is uh, our for loops here and we can actually take this out because we're iterating when we're doing our output we're iterating through every element so we can do an auto and I could put whatever here uh, let's just say one one element called num and we're going to go through the array called nums, so nums. And then, of course, we're not going to do sub k here. We're going to just do uh, whatever this auto variable is, uh, num. And so this loop will automatically go through every element of the array. And then this num variable is pointing to each element. So we just see out that element. Um, and so uh, just another little thing I thought I'd throw into this video. Uh, let's execute that and, and show that it runs exactly the same way. And pretty much what we expected, same answer as before, 
um, just a little bit uh, a different way of doing it. So uh, we could replace uh, the loop uh, at the bottom uh, could also be uh, that for loop uh, style and we could do the same thing at display uh, the array at the beginning. Uh, so, so mainly we were looking at uh, selection sort here uh, and so hopefully this shows you kind of how that works um, and see if that meets what you're uh, looking for and um, hopefully that was useful and I'll uh, see you next time.